my little raindrops. Uh, I'm a little bit late to the party, but let's do a July reading wrap up. So the reason that I am a little bit late to posting this is because I recorded this on July 31st and then I realized that the entire video for some reason does not want to load. So we're now re-recording it. So let's hope that this time works well. So I read six books. Yeah, I read six books in July, which if you've watched my other reading wrap-ups, you know that this is a little bit less than what I usually read, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I had an insanely busy month of July. I moved back home for the summer, and I am also kind of focusing on the business more somewhat full-time. I'm also a tutor. Uh, I started this job like, I started it during the summer, so that's rather time-consuming as well. Uh, so that's why I'm kind of reading a little bit slow. Um, even though I told myself, like, oh, I'm gonna read so many books over the summer, and I just haven't really got to do that yet. It's already the last month of summer. We're in August. Uh, I'm recording this August 7th, and so far I've read two books in August. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do my very best to read as many books as I can this month because I'm starting school back up in September. But anyways, this is not what this video is about. This video is about the books that I read in July. So we're gonna get started. The very first book that I read in July, I think this is probably like 100%. It is in my top 10, if not my top five. And it is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. This book, oh my God, I loved it. Like, I don't even have words for it. First off, you should know that I am a huge fan of the movie um, Just Like Heaven with Reese Witherspoon and Mark Ruffalo. It is based on a book, which I read. I actually read it when I was in the 11th grade. Um, and I'm French, so I read it in French because I went to a French high school. And so I read that book in French, watched the movie in English, obviously. And so when I read this, I was not expecting it to be so similar but so different than Just Like Heaven. Um, basically this book is about Florence. Uh, she's a ghostwriter for this very very popular author. If you don't know what a ghostwriter is, it's basically someone who writes for an author under the author's name. So if Ashley didn't want to write anymore and she still had like two books with her on her contract or something like that, she could go hire someone else to write the book for her, but it would still be under her name, so that person would be her ghostwriter. That's just an ex like a basic explanation of what a ghostwriter is. Anyways, Florence is a ghostwriter for this very, very popular romance author, and Florence has completely lost faith in love. But she still has two, I think, she still has one book to finish, and her deadline is quickly approaching. And she goes to meet her new editor, who turns out this to be this like very good looking man um and he's not like he's not exactly rude like you would expect like oh yeah he's gonna be a grump right not exactly he was actually like i was surprised that he wasn't a grump um uh, but he was like very severe about the deadline like he he wasn't gonna extend it and so she's kind of freaking out and then she gets a phone call and her father has passed away and so she needs to go back home to prepare for the funeral. And what's really, really peculiar about this book is that Florence and her dad have this special gift that they could see ghosts. And on top of that, Florence's family owns a funeral home. So, you know, it's just kind of like that really perfect morbid thing. And so when she goes back home, you know, they're, they're talking about the will. Uh, the lawyer is reading the will and someone knocks at the door and so Florence goes to open it and who is standing there her editor yes the same guy that she met a few days before he's standing at her door and he's like what am I doing here and then there's a gust of wind that just you know whew. but do you know what's what doesn't happen that should happen his hair doesn't move even though there's a huge gust of wind his hair doesn't move which means he's a ghost. And so you follow the entire story 
where like the main plot is basically Florence dealing with so much grief because she was so close with her father and she she just lost him and it's she didn't get to spend as much time as she wanted with him because she didn't come home as often because her gift of seeing ghosts was kind of a it seems like it was more of a burden to her than anything else and so you see throughout the entire book she is dealing with her grief for the loss of her father but she is also helping ben try to move on ben is her editor who is a ghost now she's trying to help ben move on so that you know he can go to heaven and he can rest in peace uh, but it's oh my god it is absolutely stunning it is beautiful it is very very well written i am beyond happy that i i, I went to chapters one day just because i i think i went yeah, I went after I got this tattoo. I had a tattoo appointment and Chapters is like right next to it. And it was this huge rainstorm outside. Like when I got out of the tattoo studio, it was like pouring. I could not see in front of me. I had to sprint to my car. And then I had to stay in the car for like 10 minutes before I could even drive. And so I drove to Chapters, which was like two minutes away. And I got this book. And I think it's one of the best decisions I have made this year. I'm not kidding. It was so good. The romance is so great. It is sweet. It is heartfelt. It is so, so, so romantic. And if you're a romantic at heart, like me, you know romance is my favorite genre. It'll make you so happy. It will make you so, so, so happy. I swear. Okay, this book, a five stars infinity, one of my absolute favorites. I adore it. And yes, it is a super, super, super happy ending. I promise you will be so happy and if you love this and you haven't seen just like heaven the movie or if you haven't read the book i strongly recommend it it's super similar in a sense that it's a human with a ghost but it's a happy ending it, i don't want to say too much because that would be spoiling both of them for you but please give this a shot if you like romance and books about books because she is an author well a ghostwriter and he's an editor it's in a world of books it's their family oh it's so good okay uh, I, I do this a lot when I'm very expressive about something so you can tell that I really really like this okay the next book that I read uh, yes okay the next book that I read was The Wall of Winnipeg and Me by Mariana Zapata I have never read a book by this author before this was my very very first one and I am positively obsessed Okay, when I tell you that I relate, well, not not exactly relate, but I, I just have so much love for her writing style. It's so good. And the ending of this was literally like the embodiment of Happily Ever After. I don't think I've ever read a book that was just like, oh, like a not not exactly refreshing but just like literally a blanket of love covering you it's it's enemies to lover well okay so i will give a little background for this for those of you who haven't read it or are looking to be convinced to read it so vanessa is the assistant to the wall of winnipeg this very very famous football player who is like the biggest grump there is he's like friends with two people he's rather rude he doesn't, like, she tells him good morning every morning and he doesn't say anything. He's just like, meh, you know. He doesn't even say thank you when she makes his meals. So after a while, she's just, like, she's grown sick of this. She's worked for him for years. She is tired. She wants to, like, pursue her passion and have her own business. And so she decides to quit. But then Aiden, the, the Wall of Winnipeg, the famous football player, realizes that he basically, like... He took advantage of her kindness, of her hard work. He didn't thank her or anything, like I said, and he realizes this. And so he shows up at her place and he's like, I need you to come back. Like, you're coming back. <laughs> you gotta come back. But then you see that he kind of has ulterior motives. Well, I wouldn't say ulterior motives. But anyways, Aiden is Canadian. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I am also Canadian, if you did not know. Uh, so he's Canadian and his visa is about to expire because something about not signing a contract with the same football team, I can't remember. I didn't really register all the technical terms of it. But anyways, his visa is about to expire and he needs to marry 
someone so he can stay. And so he's like, I know you have a lot of student debt because she has a, a lot of student debt. Love that for us. So he finds out that she has, I don't know how much money, like a lot. And anyways, he's like, I will pay all of your student debt if you marry me, stay with me for five years, you know, ensure that this is, that our marriage seems legit so that I can keep my visa and keep playing and I will pay all your student debt, I will buy you a house, I will make sure you're settled. And so she thinks about it, she agrees, and they then kind of, like, she doesn't take back the assistant position, but she kind of, you know, still takes care of him. Uh, not immediately at first, but then she realizes, like, oh, he's been eating frozen meals instead of actually making himself food. And so, you know, she kind of, she makes herself lunch and makes sure that she makes it vegan because he's vegan. Um, so that he can have some and they're they grow they have an amazing friendship after a little while and then it obviously develops into something more And it when I tell you it's one of the best romances I've ever read. Oh, it's so great. Not only is it adorable and sweet, but there's also like There's great banter, but there's also like oh the tension was so good and Aiden is protective and if you if you know me, you know, I love it when they're protective and so, like, the day they get married, oh, it's so good, I love it so much, but so they get married, and, like, at the beginning, they're still kind of, like, just friends, but then they kind of start falling into the routine of an actual married couple, and then they fall in love, and they, like, they don't even need to, they just, they just kind of go from friends to lovers, to like literally just like being a married couple if that makes sense like they just they fall into it very very well and like i said the ending made me so happy i don't think i've ever read an ending so happy before and you know when you read a romance book oftentimes like about 75 percent in there's gonna be the big argument right where they break up or like they find out that they've been betrayed or whatever something happens that leads to them breaking up and then it's the amazing like they get back together they make up and happily ever after right but this the argument is kind of more in the first 25 percent when vanessa leaves when she quits her job that's kind of like the big argument i like that's what i found because the rest of it, it's not like, they don't have that huge argument, which is something that I loved so, so, so much. I want every single one of her books. Uh, I actually read another one in August, not in July, but I read uh, All Roads Lead Here in August. So good. I'm not kidding. I need every single one of them. Anyways, this was Infinity and Beyond. Adored it. If you're looking for a really good, like, marriage of convenience, enemies to lovers type thing, grumpy sunshine, this is it. I mean, they watch Dragon Balls together. If you don't know what that is, it's, it's an anime. They watch it together. He watches it because she loves it so much. Anyways, I finally read it. I've had this book since 2020. When it kind of started going viral on TikTok, I never read it until July, just because I, I don't know, I was kind of hesitant. And then I have a bunch of friends, both friends that I know, like, in real life, and both friends that I made online through BookTok and Bookstagram and everything, that were like, not like blackmailing me but saying like oh my god you have to read this you have to you have to you have to and so i did and what i will say it does live up to the hype it is rather good um there are some parts that i will say felt like a bit cliche but i mean it does happen in books you know like especially when books that have the same plot just keep coming out and coming out it it obviously happens that something will be super predictable I will say the end was not predictable. It was absolutely fantastic. I I think that I rated this five stars just because of the ending. I know a lot of people have said that like the second, the second and third book are much better than the first one. I don't have the entire series yet. 
I don't want to knock it till I try it, right? Because I did read the first book and so it would be pretty cool to keep reading. But again, if you know me, you know I take breaks in between reading books in a series. So like after I read this, like I still haven't read the second book just because I like to take a break. And a lot of my friends are like, how can you do that? How can you read the book, get submerged into the world of that book and then read other books and then read this the next book and have to like resubmerge yourself into it and the way that i see it it's kind of like going back home after a long vacation if that makes sense like i i read this and i will easily get back into this world uh when i read the second book it'll just feel like coming back home that's what it is for me i will so i will say though that it's not a pressing matter for me to finish the series i'm not saying that like i did like it i liked it i I, I mean, I gave this five stars, but it's not my favorite series. And it's, like I said, it's not exactly a pressing matter. And that is fine. If it's your favorite series, don't think, don't take this the wrong way. I am not, I am, you know, I'm not judging. You know me, I'm not judging one bit. I, I don't believe in judging people on their favorite books. That's not a thing. So if it is your favorite series, I'm so happy you have one because I still don't have, well, I think I do have one. Anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm digressing. But this was five stars. Not a pressing matter for me to finish the series, but I will probably give it a shot. The next book that I read. Now, I posted a TikTok about me getting ready to annotate this book and it went absolutely viral. Like 2.7 million views in like a week and like half of the comments were people saying like oh my god yes i love it so much i need to reread it too and then half the comments were like why are you even wasting time of your life reading this why are you reading this piece of trash why are you you know like just pure hate on the book and i will say that it did hurt a little bit because i love this series so much um i know that there are a lot of red flags in it i know that it's not like I know that it's not the most healthy relationship, but it's about a vampire and a human. What can you expect, right? So I reread Twilight, um, just the first book. I read this last year. I, I read it in May, 2021, and I did annotate it, but I used like those neon color tabs. I did not track what the colors meant and I didn't write in it. So I had no idea what the tabs meant, so I decided to remove them and annotate it like I do now, color coding, like getting the tabs to match the aesthetic and the cover of the book, and then obviously highlighting and writing and doing all this fun stuff. Because Twilight is such a comfort to me, whether it be the books or the movies, like, look, I know the first movie is absolutely horrendous. Okay, it's probably one of the cringiest movies I have ever watched in my entire life, but that's what makes me love it so much. I I can't even describe it. You know, I'm sure we all have like that guilty pleasure, right? Well, Twilight is it for me. It's like I need to watch it every single fall. And if you don't like it, it's fine. It's totally fine. But like I just said, judging people by the books they like is not a thing. So if you don't like it, it's fine, but I love it, which is also fine. So I rated it five stars, infinity, because I love it so much. Um, you probably see that this is the rest of the series. These are collector's, collector's item or collector's edition. They're, they're the white cover edition books. Um, I think I ordered the, um, the box set from Indigo like two years ago, I think. I love this with my entire heart. If you don't know what Twilight is, it's basically it's, it's a love story about a girl who moves to Forks and falls in love with a vampire. It's that easy. Um, and honestly, the book is so much better than the movie. You know how in the movie, Bella basically like, it seems like Bella falls in love with Edward in like a week. It takes months for her to like, actually say I was un unconditionally and irrevocably in love with him you know that is a classic line uh but it takes her a couple months 
and you see that in the book you don't see that in the movie because it would have been more expensive and the first movie was apparently meant to just be like an indie movie type thing because they didn't have a huge budget for it and then people went crazy over it and that's why the rest of the movies are better quality anywho uh the next book i read when i tell you i love this book with my whole heart and that i love this series with my whole heart i know that i said earlier that i thought i didn't have a favorite series and then i went back and then said maybe i do i do it is this okay this is defend the dawn by bridget Cameron. this is an advanced readers copy that i was gifted uh, from Bloomsbury Publishing. Thank you so much. If you're not familiar with this series, wait a minute. It is the Defy the Night series. This is also an advanced reader's copy that I got last summer. Um, it was my very, very first ARC, which stands for advanced reader's copy, uh, like ever in my entire life. And I still like this. Not only did I love the book so much, it also means a lot to me because it was my first Kind of like my first gift as an official book talker uh so technically it's all because of you guys uh, anyways so i absolutely adored this book with my entire being and then i was sent book number two and i fell even more in love with it when i tell you that this was a work of art and now i'm saying that this was even better than this if you haven't pre-ordered it yet, why, what are you doing? What are you What are you doing? Get on the website right now and pre-order this because it is so, so, so good. Oh my God, okay. So for those of you who are not familiar with Defy the Night, basically it's kind of like a uh, Robin Hood retelling-ish. Basically the Kingdom of Kandala are dealing with this kind of, with this very troublesome sickness. And the only way to kind of manage it or stay somewhat healthy is to take an elixir made with moonflower petals and of course if moonflower petals is like the only cure it's incredibly expensive and people that are not able to buy themselves moonflower well they're either dying or they're stealing it and then they're getting killed by the king's justice because they've committed a felony but Tessa and Wes are like the little Robin Hoods. They get Moonflower and they deliver it to those in need. And so, so this is what this book is mainly about. It's about Tessa and Wes doing this thing. Then about like a little less than halfway through the book, Tessa somehow gets to the castle and she ends up staying there to help them like make more use of the moonflower petals that they have because they don't need to take as much as they are taking and so it's just this entire story about trying to be able to save everyone in the kingdom of kandala and then this one they're still trying to do that and there's this stranger that comes in a ship from islands that they don't exactly know of or that they thought were like completely gone and no one was living on there um, and so he comes and he's like, here, I have a bunch of moonflower and we have a whole lot more where that came from and we're going to give it to you as long as you give us steel because the kingdom of Kandala, they make a lot of steel. And so they try to bargain this. They don't really know the stranger, right? They don't exactly trust him either, but he has enough evidence to back his claims up. And so in this book, Prince Koric and Tessa, which have become friends i guess we could say uh, they go on the ship with this stranger to go to the islands to discuss a plan um or like a, a contract with the king of the main island and since cork is the king's justice he is also the little brother of king harriston so he goes there and tessa is there to like confirm that the moonflower is actually legit and so the most of the story happens on the boat uh it's there's kind of like a love triangle situation between Tessa, Prince Korg, and the stranger. And there's a secret room that Prince Korg re requested. He requested to see and he was denied the access to that room. And so there's kind of this secret. People are not trusting each other. There's this, you know, it was just a bunch of mistrust. And when I tell you the end had me throwing the book across the room, 
I I rarely do that. Okay, I rarely do I rarely do anything to my books other than read them and annotate them. But when I tell you I slammed this shut and almost threw it across the room, I'm not lying, okay? I I am guessing the third book is going to come out next year because Defy the Night came out September 2021. Defend the Dawn is coming out September 2022. And I am praying with my entire soul and being that Miss Kemmerer will write and have book three ready by September next year. If that's, not po if that's not possible, of course it is fine. But I'm really hoping to because this is meant to be a trilogy. So that will be the very last book. And I can't wait to see like how this is going to end. I rated this Infinity and Beyond. Um, when I read The Five the Night, I had planned to get a Moonflower tattoo and then I kind of didn't get to do it. And now that I've read this, like it's, it's a necessity. I don't know where <laughs> I will get it done, but you know, you know, like when I have an identity crisis or when I'm stressed with school, I get a tattoo. So <laughs> I will probably end up getting it by the end of this year. This is my favorite series ever. Favorite, favorite, favorite. And uh, to prove that to you, I don't know if I can. Do you see Defy the Night there? I don't think you can see it all that well, but I have like two or three editions of Defy the Night. I'm so excited for Defend the Dawn because look, look how pretty it is. Can you imagine this in a really nice hardcover? Oh my God. Oh, and I remember um, when I read Defy the Night, I talked about it so much on TikTok and Bloomsbury like, we're like, oh my god, you really love this book? We're gonna send you a goodies box. And when I tell you I lost my mind, honestly, I wouldn't be mad if it happened again for Defend the Dawn. That was another book that I read in July. And then the very last one that I read was also an advanced reader's copy that I received from HarperCollins Publishing, but this book was actually published, um... When did it come out? I think it came out in June. Yeah, it came out in June. Uh, this is a Canadian author from Nova Scotia. Uh, I'm from New Brunswick, so we're relatively close. And so the US version of this book is coming out August 23rd, but the Canadian one was already out. I didn't know this. So I, I posted a TikTok about it and was like, yeah, this is coming out August 23rd. And people were like, oh yeah, I already bought it. What? So. <laughs> So I knew that probably because they were Canadian. Anyways, this book, so good. So, so, so good. It's about Genevieve or Jenny. And uh, she is a spiritualist. So she speaks to ghosts, but technically she's a fake because ghosts don't exist. Uh, but she's doing that to, you know, like for for a living so that she can keep living, keep paying her rent. And then one day she gets caught and she gets put in prison and she is about to be executed. And then the lawyer of this very, very, very well-off Lord goes to the police station because um, the fiance of the Lord died about six months prior. And they say that it was uh, that she took her own life but the Lord doesn't believe it and he's still trying to seek justice for her. And so the lawyer is there and he sees Jenny and he'd heard of her reputation. And so he says, I want her out of there to come with me to do a seance for the Lord so that he has peace and that we can put um, his fiance to rest. And in exchange for that seance, I'm gonna represent you in court and I'm gonna make sure that you win and that you get out. And so she goes there and when she meets the Lord, she was expecting like this old man, but turns out he's like about her age. He's very good looking. And um, he he is very rude on their first meeting, but then we get to see that it was because he was completely shocked to see such a beautiful woman. And so they kind of like, he doesn't really like that she's there, but he's still like, okay, well, I guess, you know, I don't have much of a choice. And so he asks her to fake, to, to do a seance. He knows that they're fake. And so he asks her to do a seance and figure out who the murderer is because he just knows that his fiance was murdered. While the lawyer wanted her to just do a seance and, you know, have her rest in peace and just give peace of mind to the Lord. 
So she kind of goes against the lawyer's wishes because the Lord could, like this, put her back in jail. And so the Lord and Jenny obviously end up falling in love. I mean, this is a, like, fantasy romance type thing. So they fall in love, but like it's very, it's very, very slow burn. It's not, it's not the main plot. It's very subplot, uh, but it made it so good. And then throughout the story, stuff happens to Jenny, like in her room. Uh, she hears scratching in her wardrobe. She hears voices, stuff moves around. And then she's starting to believe that the Lord's fiance's soul is out to haunt her or she's just like trying to get peace. But oh my god, when I tell you the plot twists in this book, it's absolutely astonishing. It was so good. Um, you probably, I'm, I know that I realize I've been saying this often, but if you know me, you know how much I love Small Favors by Erin A. Craig. One of my favorite books of all time. Whenever someone says, can you recommend a YA fantasy book? Small Favors. You need to read it. You have to. It's so good. Because it's kind of like, it's a YA fantasy romance, but it's also spooky. This was also spooky because, like, you truly believe that the ghosts and souls are real. And that they're actually haunting the manor. It's so, so, so good, but they're not. Ghosts are not real in this. Like, I know some books make ghosts real, but not in this one. It's absolutely all make-believe. But it is so good! Oh my god, this, I, I keep putting it back down. This was five stars. Absolutely stunning. Okay, um, well, those were all the books that I read in April. Well, that was it for today's video. I hope you got some book recs. I hope you enjoyed it. I am kind of running low on content ideas, so if you have any requests or ideas, please leave them in the comments. I might not, like obviously, I might not be able to record all of these ideas very quickly. Like I said, I'm rather busy this summer, but I promise that I will take it into consideration. I will add it to my content list. I will do my very best. I will try to post more often. I know that I've been kind of posting like every two weeks now. Again, I'm so sorry. Life has been absolutely insane. Let me know which books you read in July. I would love to know. Did you read any of these? Have you ever heard of any of these? And also, if you like this video and you want me to keep posting, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It is super helpful, both for our family to grow, but also because it helps me see what kind of videos you really like and what kind of videos that I should keep doing. So I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys in the next one.